So we're recording, but Rob can edit what he needs to out of it. So that's all. Cool. Cool. All right. So um, great to have you with us, Mel. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks, Ben. Although the look of that Parramatta jersey is a bit, it's hurt my eyes a little bit. <laughs> I'll try and oh, no, everything's good. <laughs> I'll try and slouch down so you can't see too much of it. <laughs> That's all good. Uh, excellent. Yeah, I have to maintain my patriotic Sydney roots. You know, living up here now. Um, oh, yeah, I'm a I'm a Sharkies fan, so long suffering. Yeah. Mm. Well, they they yeah. had a, a premiership, whereas we didn't <laughs> for a long time. So. Well, so, so I only won though. Yeah. Nice. True. Mm. All right. Well, Mal, it's so good to have you on uh, on the road, and it's just such a great opportunity for us to see different people from church during this time. Um, people have probably seen you around at church, but not everyone might know lots about you, uh, myself included. So it's great to ask you some questions and get to know you a bit. Um, yeah. The first one being, uh, you have an interesting full name. I take it. Can you share with us your full name? <laughs> Yeah, so my name's Malcolm Turnbull, but I'm definitely not the ex-Prime Minister. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting, it was interesting while Malcolm Turnbull was the Prime Minister. Uh, and I did get mistaken for the Prime Minister fairly regularly, which was fun. And I had a lot of fun with it. I, we, I used to travel a lot for work. So I always tried to be a little bit late at the gate so they would page Malcolm Turnbull and Everyone would get excited and look around. And, but I had my favourite story was we, um, I, I owned a business or part owned a business, which we sold several years ago. And we had some people over from America and Sweden uh, to sign all the contracts. And at the, at the end of the signatures, they said, oh, Mal, we want you to book the best restaurant in Sydney for us and we'll go out and celebrate tonight. So my favourite restaurant down there is a restaurant called The Key. Uh, and I rang the key and I said, look, I want to make a reservation for, um, you know, half a dozen people tonight. And they said, oh, under what name? I said, Malcolm Turnbull. And they said, oh, do you want your normal table, Mr. Turnbull? And I said, that would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a fantastic table that night with the best views in the restaurant. That's so good. Uh, yeah. I'd be I've got, I've got that. too many stories of that. That's, that is a great story anyway. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. As someone who yeah. doesn't have a name, I like there's only one person with my name in the world. I'm a bit jealous that you could do things like that. Well, it, look at that was an advantage, but I used to get a lot of abusive messages on Facebook. Um, <laughs> and I was like, oh, look at my profile picture. I'm in a wheelchair. I'm obviously <laughs> not the prime minister. But, stop, you know. stop bagging out the guy with the wheelchair. <laughs> exactly. It's not my fault. No, that's all right. Oh, that's funny. Hey, yeah. thanks for sharing that stuff. Um, it tells us a little bit about you. And I was wondering also, where did you grow up? You haven't been living on the lake the whole of your life, have you? No, no, no. I actually grew up in the um, Sutherland Shire. Hence, I'm a Sharky supporter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I grew up in um, a little place called Lilypilly, which was quite idyllic back in the day. It was yeah. uh, on the Hacking River. Um, grew up fishing. Love the water. I was born in the Solomon Islands. So I was born on a little island. We moved over here when I was four or five years old. Yeah, well. Wow. And um, yeah, so so as a kid, my life my life was pretty idyllic in terms of the environment um, that we grew up in. And, and I, I started surfing when I was uh, 12 years old and I, I fell in love with surfing. So yeah. so that was, that was my um, big passion as a kid. And, I, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was where I grew up. I'm a shy boy. I'm a hobbit. I like it from the insular peninsula. <laughs> yes, exactly. And did you did you have aspirations to to go on and become a pro surfer, or what did you see yourself doing later on in life when you were a young guy? Do you remember? Yeah, that's an interesting question, Ben. It's a very long kind of. I could answer that in a very long way, but I won't. Um, I was people, not talented. When we get back to church, maybe people can ask you for a longer version another time. Yeah, yeah. But I was never I was never talented enough to have aspirations to go pro. A few of my mates did. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really excited to see where they're at in life these days. Um, mm -hmm. But I, look, I, I didn't have any real aspirations. I was quite happy and content to um, to surf and 
I've, I'm not a goal. I'm not a goal maker. I don't, I've never had goals in my life. I still don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I, um, I did okay at school. I qualified for university. I decided not to go to university. I started doing a trade, um, sheet metal work apprenticeship, yep. which I enjoyed. But at 19, uh, I was involved in a car accident, broke my spine, mm -hmm. uh, ended up um, being dependent on a wheelchair. So, um, so my life changed pretty dramatically after that. So, wow. so it's, and it's, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting journey. Many, many stories in there. I, I had some substance abuse issues as, as a kid growing up and, and then on to about 30 um, years of age and then went into a rehab, got clean, blah, 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 blah. So wow. I, yeah, there's, there's a million stories in my head somewhere. Yeah. Well, I, I look forward to asking you more and more in person. Mm -hmm. Um, because it sounds really amazing. And one of the ones that I am really interested in is in that journey, how did you first hear about Jesus? How did you first get introduced to Jesus? Yeah. Sorry, I'm um tea tea. I'm drinking? just a total tea addict. What are you, <laughs> what are you um, drinking? Yeah. What's your poison of choice? Ah, uh, just English breakfast black tea. Yeah, no. Yeah. If I could have that intravenous, I'd do it. Milk sugar? No sugar? <laughs> no sugar. Just no black, nice. no milk. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so I, I was brought up in, a, in a family. My dad is a devout atheist, yeah. and my mum a devout uh, Catholic. Wow. So, um, I ended up going to a Roman Catholic school in the sixties and seventies, back when the culture was not that kind of conducive to, um, to witnessing uh, Jesus. Mm. So I was introduced to Jesus quite early in my life, but I totally rejected Jesus on the basis of what I saw in terms of organized religion or the organized religion that I saw. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I alluded to it a little bit before I got clean when I was about 30 years, clean, 30 years old. Mm. And, um, and I, I got clean through a program that has a set of steps. Anyway, really long story short, the eleventh step of that is we sought free prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. So I was really searching for God, really trying to work out what God was in my heart. I wanted to be some Eastern philosophy that was pretty hip and groovy. Mm. And then one day I met someone who said, um, and we had a long discussion about God and uh, they basically said, well, if you want to know God, get to know Jesus. Mm. And, um, and it was so solid and direct that I thought, okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to reread the Gospels. And, 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 and I started going to a church and joining a small group. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's, that, was my, that was my conversion kind yeah. of point of someone actually saying, uh, if you want to get to know God, get to know Jesus. Yeah. And um, just... Subsequently to that, I've been married to that person for 21 years now. So <laughs> God works in mysterious ways. That is so cool. Yeah. Uh, what a blessing. Um, yeah, yeah. I was wondering as well, like since that time that you got to know Jesus and, and sort of made a commitment as a Christian, has it all been smooth sailing compared to the first part of your life? Uh, no, not at all. Um, the Obviously, I think we all face hard times. Um, you know, I've had I've had major setbacks in that time, which have been really difficult. Yeah. Um, if you get to know me, you'll know that I'm a wrestler with God, I'm a yeah. bit of a Jacob. Um, so I'm, I, I often wrestle with God, and you know, some of those passages that I find really hard to kind of, you know, what what's he trying to say here? And there's yeah. different opinions on a lot of those sort of things. So I wrestle with that. Yeah. Um, and obviously there's been physical challenges and watching friends get sick and die and pass away and all, yeah. all sorts of stuff. So, but, but what, what has changed so dramatically in my life is that I have this anchor that's there all the time. Um, I, I love that passage in, uh, in John where, where Jesus is questioning disciples. Well, who do you think I am? Yeah. Um, and they just go, well, you know, where else would we go? Where else mm. would we go for the bread of life or the, yeah. or the, um, or the water of uh, mm. the fountain of life, you know? Yeah. Um, 
so so I love the surety that I have in Christ uh, and that that this stuff is temporary and I'm just a sojourner on the way mm. to where you know I'm ultimately meant to be yeah mm. that's awesome and that anchor keeps you firm through through all the storms through all the storms yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely we could sing that song yeah um, I won't torture you with my voice <laughs> we can sing it together and everyone can suffer through it with us <laughs> um and we, we are uh, living through a bit of a storm at the moment in our world. Um, so, yeah, I'm just wondering, uh, how has that shaped anything in the last few weeks uh, for you? Has that changed the way you've been going about your life, your daily life? Really interesting. Really interesting question. And, um, again, being Mal, I could take a really long time to answer that. But, um, what, his, so, obviously... I'm staying at home a lot at the moment, yeah. Um, we're doing the Zoom catch-ups with mm -hmm. church, with our small groups, uh, small group, which is fantastic. Uh, I've got a number of other communities that I, that I catch up with regularly via Zoom, which has really been uh, a real blessing. Interesting, I think what it's done is it's, I'm a natural introvert. Mm -hmm. um, what it's done is push me out of my comfort zone and I've made a commitment that I'm going to ring three or four people every day just to touch base, see how they're going, let them know how I'm going. So it's, wow. there's, there's positive things that I see happening. Mm -hmm. And honestly, Ben, I go to bed every night with just a real sense of gratitude for so much. Yeah. Um, a, a real sense of gratitude that I'm not living in our old place down in Sydney, mm -hmm. that we're in this place. You've been to, you know, where we live. It's yeah. just, we're going to be in isolation. This is a fantastic place to be. That's where you want to do um, it. Yeah, and, and just gratitude again to God for that kind of surety that we have in God. Mm. Um, that's really, really been um, great. So I really like that gratitude. And then also being really challenged on how privileged I am and how many people out there just haven't got access to, to what we have. So mm. really trying to think outside of the box of, you know, how can we be a service and use in this period of time? Mm. And, um, you know, both locally and internationally, if there's any way to do that. Mm. And I've also been having lots of really meaningful conversations that I don't believe I would have had if COVID-19 wasn't going down. So, so that's encouraging as well. Yeah, it's real positive. Yeah. And it's really like, it's such a powerful testimony to hear you talk about the gratitude that you go to sleep with every night. I mean, knowing that you, you live every day in a wheelchair, like some people might look at that as a big inhibit, inhibiting their um, freedom and their, and their joy. And yet you're, you're fully full of that joy each day um, in the midst of, a, of an arguably hard time. It's cool. It's really, it, it really is an internal thing a lot of the times, isn't it? It's like uh, um, the outside appearances, don't reflect what's going on internally because uh, I know a lot of people who I'd love to be as handsome as and uh, you know as as talented as Rob, but internally Rob, they're, they're not that great sorry <laughs> when you said handsome I said Rob obviously springs to mind <laughs> yeah uh, yeah 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 or your or your good self you know but um Got a shame. but I just <laughs> you know they internally they're not great and I made a decision a long time ago that I would concentrate on what I can do rather than what I can't do. Because if yeah. I concentrate on what I can't do, I'll go crazy. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Mm. That's great. Mm. Well, yeah. I really appreciate everything you're sharing, but I wonder if there's something that's on your heart to say to the Lake Mac community out there who are currently watching us. Um, yeah. What's on your heart to yeah. share with them? Yeah. Yeah, there is. Look, I just want to say thank you to Lake Mac and the church and the community. Uh, I'm, I've really appreciated the leadership of the church during this time and, and how quickly they have responded. Mm. Um, and also, you know, I had the privilege of being a, of being a little bit of a linked, um, the linked ministry that started. Mm. And uh, I had a great time ringing people. And, and again, that was out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, but to ring people and just have these conversations and the enthusiasm and the way that they're embracing COVID-19 and the challenges of it and mm -hmm. looking to express that in love is really, really encouraging for me. So I'm really, um, yeah, I, I just, yeah, thank you, everybody. And 
let's kind of spur each other on to to continue that. Yeah. Uh, and finally, it's funny, isn't it? I I, I had I came across um, one passage out of two Timothy one seven, which basically says. We were not given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. And I've been really meditating on that and just trying to apply that to this situation. I think it's such such a powerful verse that we have power to do stuff through Christ that's really meaningful. Mm. We have, we've got a spirit of love to love each other. Uh, and we've got this self-discipline that we don't have to be racing out buying toilet paper, <laughs> you know. Um, we, we've got self-discipline that we can actually feel safe within within Christ mm. and live according to that. And yeah, so so it's you know amongst all the gloom and doom, and and it's a serious virus. Yeah. Um, but there's there's really positive stuff, and I see God working through that according to His purpose. Yeah, awesomely, and and we'll see that more and more. I think in weeks to come, it's it's really encouraging. It's been so good, Mal, it's hearing. Praying for. Yeah, yeah, it's been so good hearing your story, and thank you for sharing so honestly and openly, and and hearing mm. the things that God's working in you during this time as well. It's really, really cool. Yeah, pleasure, um, pleasure. I think um, our testimonies are powerful, and my hope is that my testimony will stop others from having my testimony and, <laughs> and have the great testimonies that comes from being brought up in a Christian family. If they do as I say, not as I do. The, the uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> and, and Mel, just as we wrap up, I know you've got, you've got a couple of birds as pets there. I wondered if they yeah, had yeah. anything they wanted to share with us at all. <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that we've got three birds. Yeah. Um, one of them's particularly, um, uh, extroverted Leroy, the, who you've met. Yep. Um, Leroy is currently covered up because he's been having too much to say all morning. <laughs> so that's his punishment. Do you cover him up when he's? he's... That's that's his screaming management. We, we yeah. he gets out the cage really most of the day, but every now and then when he starts screaming, mm-hmm. it's a noise that you really don't want to behold for too much. So we cover him up and he kind of settles down a bit after that. Awesome. Yeah. So nothing from the birds. Nothing from the birds. <laughs> good, good to know. Well, it's been so, so good chatting and, you know, on yeah, behalf of me and everyone at church. So we're so privileged to have you guys as part of our community. Um, and thank you for all you're doing, especially with the linked ministry and, and beyond. Um, no, and and giving love to Sharice too. Shall do. And thanks, Ben. Thanks for this. Thanks for what you're doing as well. It's really, uh, it's really cool to see you do out there and Rachel doing what they're doing and, uh, it's a pleasure making videos and trying to make this as much fun as possible. So. Definitely, definitely. Thanks. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll just I'll hang up the recording. Bye. Bye all.